Uh, after the... Yeah, so they throw after, you in the room. Okay. I get thrown in the rehearsal room. Door closes behind me. Band starts to play. Within 15 seconds, I have a migraine. Within 20 seconds, blood is oozing, I'm sure, out of my ears. And at 45 seconds, I'm physically and violently ill. I shoot out the roll, whatever nine frames or so is left, not even looking at what I'm shooting, just to get the hell out of there. And I don't remember if I vomited or not, but I certainly had to. And my hearing has never been the same since that day. I can't have a first date at, at a restaurant, at a crowded restaurant. I turn into George Burns. You know, I turn into Abe Vigoda sending his soup back at a deli because it's not hot enough. You know, huh? What? Huh? You're an actress? Huh? Huh? It's, it's terrible. It's terrible. I'm too young to sound like that. Um, but that's that's the God's honest truth. Of, and and that's going to happen. Sooner or later, you spend as much time around rock bands, that's going to happen. But that day did not help me. Uh, you know, another... Uh... Another story you told me off camera had to do with um, uh, with uh, why you never got married, <laughs> didn't never settle down, didn't have kids. Well, I did, in fact, get married. I was married for four and a half years. Um, and with all due respect to my ex-wife, Kimberly, who I love very much, um, I was also in the throes of a serious cocaine addiction and, and uh, other stuff going on. And I wasn't around a lot. And I, I, I was not ready to be married. And I did not treat my marriage with a lot of respect. And we'll leave it at that. Gotcha. You, you know, if you're traveling as much as I've traveled, <laughs> you never really unpack. You know, you're never really home. You got one foot out, one foot in, in your house, and one foot out the door all the time. And and uh, you, you know, it's you're lucky if you can get a new set of clean clothes. Um, you're always looking ahead to the next plane flight, the next shoot, the next tour, the next whatever. And one day it can be Paris, France. The next day it could be Paris, Texas. You don't know. You're you're like a, a pinball, just going back and forth and back and forth. Um, and over and above that, there's never a point where, okay, it's the holidays, it's late December. You know, maybe there is a week and a half that you could count on being dead. Um, because I had a People Magazine contract, by the time the year-end issue was put to bed which is essentially the beginning of December, it would be a double issue, so it would be on the stands for two weeks instead of one. Then there was a week and a half, two weeks of downtime before you'd gear up for January. And um, so the, you're always... You know, I've traveled a lot in my, in my time. More than any politician or athlete or rock star or anyone that you could think of I'm sure of it airline pilot I've it's I've got so many miles on so many airlines not to mention before they even invented mileage clubs I think 1982 well 1982 I know is when American Airlines started their advantage program but I used to I mean I had hundreds of thousands of miles on TWA. It's not even existence anymore. Um, me and my friend David Renson went around the world. For 90,000 miles, you could get two first-class around-the-world tickets on TWA. And uh, after the Olympics in 84, we I cashed in 90,000 miles, and me and Renson went to uh, England, and then France, and, and then somewhere else uh, then I had to go back to London to shoot Jennifer Beals and we had rented this car for free from TWA and he drove it down to Nice and then I met him back in Nice and we drove 
from Nice over down through the Alps, through Innsbruck, and from Innsbruck to, I think we went into Italy, and he, he said, oh, I've got a cousin who might know some models in Milan, so we took a detour over to Milan. He didn't know any. Um, then we were ended up in Genoa on Columbus Day and then down to Rome. We dumped the car in Rome, and then we flew to Cairo, first class. We were in Egypt for four days, and then I flew back to, to the States, and he stopped somewhere else. See a friend of his, and and you know, and that was for play. <laughs> I was I was going to ask you, you, know, you, 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 well, all of the stuff that you shoot professionally. Is there something that you're passionate about shooting just for you, not necessarily for people no. or as a job, or I, what is I it love, that you like? I love shooting glamour. I love shooting women. I've always loved shooting women, so I do a lot of that now for me. Um. I don't know that I've ever had a glamour assignment. I have to think about that. I must have had one. But, I, you know, I love girls. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. If, let me... Uh, because you've worked with uh, so many different people, I want to kind of throw out a... Try something different here. Okay. I'll be your guinea pig. So, here... The overarching question is, who is compassionate and loving? Stevie Nicks. Who's cantankerous? Is or was, if they're not alive. We don't have to, um, it could be dead or alive. Hmm. Who gave you the hardest time? George Michael. And why? Pain in the ass. <laughs> Just like demanding or uh, control you know, freak he's, or he's what? A guy. I walked into his suite. I had a pile of photos. I did the last Wham! US tour. Uh, and I needed these photos gone through and approved because we had magazines all over the world that were waiting on them. And, and, and he's playing with his curl and he's looking in a mirror. And he's trying to get this curl right. And he's getting frustrated because it it's not sitting right. And, and he's going to go to this party and the curl's got to be perfect. And I'm sitting there, you know, tick, 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 tick. And it's like, fuck the curl, fuck the curl. He never looked at the photos. We missed some deadlines. And he never went to the party because he couldn't get the fucking curl to sit right. So that's one of the main. And I just, I didn't. Three weeks on the road with Wham was the longest three weeks of my life. Let's just jump back to Stevie. What was, uh, you said that, you Stevie know, is, uh, she's the first one that you thought of when I said compassionate and loving. What? Well, she is. Uh, she's compassionate and loving. She's, she takes care of people. She's also the most creative person I've ever met. Every day, either painting or writing or recording something or hand tinting her photos or you name it. She's taught me what it really means to be creative and, and to work at your craft. Very cool. Um, Mensch. Ooh, Stevie. Uh, Brian May. Um, Shep Gordon. <laughs> I could see Shep. Yeah. But but what's meant? How how would Brian be a mensch? Well, Brian, you know, Brian. Brian, is the only rock star that ever came to my mom and dad's house. Um, and I loved it, you know, loved it. I mean, sitting in my mom's little, tiny little kitchen while she cooked us scrambled eggs one morning. And couldn't have been nicer until the day she passed away, my mom would say, how is that lovely boy from that group? You know, she couldn't remember his name, nor would she be expected to. Um, and Brian is, Brian's been a cheerleader for me over the years, big time. And, and just the sweetest, um, loving and... Uh, Um, 
you know, someone someone who really honors our history together. You know. Um, That's a true friend. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a lot of them. You know, they can all fit on this hand. Maybe I have a finger or two left over, but Brian's been a prince to me. You know, ever since the day I met him. You know, not to mention the fact he's a rocket scientist. He's he's one of the world's uh, true. Oh, um, uh, well, well, how can I put this? Um, he, I mean, he's got a collection of stere- stereoscopic cameras that he's beyond an expert. You know, he, he's one of the go-to experts in the world on stereoscopic photography and. You know, he co-wrote a book about the origin of the universe. I mean, he's he's got a doctorate in astrophysics or astronomy. I can't remember. Yeah, which it's one. a PhD in astronomy. Yeah, and um, you know, there he is diddling around with me. You know, I mean, an amazing, you know, a real Renaissance guy too. You know, made his own, made it the guitar he still uses and still sounds better than any fucking guitar anyone else. Has he made. made that when he was like in his teens. Something like that. Yeah. It's a cra- the, the the red guitar. I mean, I, I called Brian up one day and I had a Rolling Stone assignment to shoot um, Frank Sinatra at Universal Amphitheater. And it turns out I had some extra tickets and I invited him to come and be my date. And he came with me to see Frank Sinatra and I left him in the... Him and his security guy came and I left them in their seats while I had to go and shoot some pictures of Frank. And, and we had a blast. And I asked him recently, do you remember the time we went to see Sinatra? He said, I'll never forget it. It was one of the great things I've ever done. That's nice. Brian May. You know, nice. he's a fan. A survivor. Mm. Till the day he died, Greg Allman. Definitely. Uh, I mean, there's... Talk about pain and living through, you know, your, your brother killed, your, one of your close friends killed right after that, your bass player, your band, you know. All the family stuff, you know, new liver, you know, horrible drug addiction, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, last time we saw him about four or five years ago, maybe three, four years ago, I, we didn't know that he knew he was dying, you know, but he, he looked frail and everything, but he got up to that mic and he sounded amazing. And I'm here to tell you, if he didn't sound amazing, I wouldn't have said he sounded amazing. So I'd say he's got to be up there. Unsung hero. Lindsey Buckingham. In what way? He's a musical genius uh, on the order of a, a, a Paul McCartney or a Brian Wilson or any of the usual suspects, if you ask me. It just doesn't get, doesn't get the love. Not to mention a deadly guitar player. Beyond deadly. Someone told me a story, I don't know if it's true, that uh, Jimmy Page went backstage at a Fleetwood Mac show maybe 10 years ago, and saw Lindsay and said to him, I don't, can you tell me how you play that stuff? Because I have no idea how you play that stuff. I don't know that it's true, but I, I don't doubt it. Wow. Who's, uh, like, when you meet people, uh, uh, sometimes they're exactly like their public persona, sometimes their public persona is completely different. Who who did you meet that was completely different from from what you knew about them publicly? Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. Something about somebody that you that you uh, that you work with that came totally out of left field that you would have never thought about that person. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I mean, there are people who... That's a good question. There's people who I didn't know what to expect, I guess, and was pleasantly surprised um, in terms of what their public persona was. I'd have to really think about that. Well, let's, let's go back to uh, being surprised. Who surprised you, and in what way? Oh, well, there's you know I, probably a lot of people like all the like people like Rick Wakeman, you know who 
became a friend and uh, you know who knew that he was going to be a friend and and um you know brian and roger before i had been out with queen you know didn't know what to expect and and they both have been longtime friends and uh god it's like I, if i look at these pictures i'll get distracted you know um uh, Robert Plant certainly I didn't realize before I worked for Led Zeppelin that he was as much of a hippie as he is he's a die in the wool 1967 summer of love hippie and um, John Paul Jones turned out to be the sweetest guy in the world um, God where do I begin? <laughs> All right, and there's um, um, I think uh, at the um, at the Leica event a few a uh, few weeks ago, you were talking about the photographers that you know mostly greatly inspired mm-hmm. you. You mentioned Ethan Russell mm-hmm. as one of them. Uh, what was it about Ethan's work that that uh, that inspired well, you? Ethan's a genius. Um, Ethan is the only guy who shot album covers for the Beatles, the Stones, and the Who, if I'm not mistaken. And if if you if you look at what he shot for the Quadrophenia release, now he didn't do the cover, but the original release had this kind of photo essay of uh, mods and rockers, or mods, really. And the stuff is brilliant. I mean, the stuff is just blows my mind you know and um and and 